Testing, testing. We are back with another episode of uh, Vox Podcast uh, with me, co-host Diane Ha from Kuala Lumpur. And we are having our guest, uh, Mo, from Hey Alfred. How are you doing? Hey, good. It's good to be here. Thanks, uh, Stefano and Diane, for having me. Thanks, Stefano. So, okay, let me introduce Mo. Uh, we have the pleasure of having Mo on today, who is the co-founder and CEO of Hey Alfred, as you can see um, in the background. Um, so, Hey Alfred is a personal assistant to help you with your finances, uh, you know, figure out where your money is going, why you're going broke, um, and you can check them out at heyalfred.co, which is H-E-Y-A-L-F-R-E-D.co. Um, all right, so first question to you, Mo. I want to ask you a fun one. Um, can you tell us about uh, the founders, you know, you guys, three best friends, and what, what are your roles? Well, um, if anything, uh, maybe just to go a little bit back uh, to how it was formed. I mean, it, it was formed uh, based on, out of a partnership or friendship as well. Um, and this was a time when I was uh, still in Singapore. I was working in uh, Singapore. Um, and I got a call from one of my other co-founders, uh, Sam. And he said that, hey, I'm looking for uh, some, uh, you know, instruments or, or or you know avenues for me to start investing and this was at the time where he himself was in his early 20s and he's probably uh, gotten you know his nice steady paycheck that he's getting every month and he's looking to start investing as a very young millennial uh, saver of today um, and he asked me as if I was some guru uh, <laughs> when I was still in Singapore um, but that wasn't the case you know um, but in Singapore we had all these different uh, avenues and I was asking him whether there was any equivalent in Malaysia for him to tap on and uh, surprisingly enough, uh, you know, he, uh, upon doing some of the research, he was saying that, you know what, I just need someone to uh, tell me what to do with my money. And, uh, and then when we, you know, we dug a lot uh, deeper and started asking our friends, I said, hey, do you face this same problem? You know, you, you're starting to look into invest or started to ma manage your wealth better. Where do you go or what do you do is the first step. Uh, this is also because it's not something that was ever taught in school. Um, you know, as soon as you graduate, you get out of, the, you get into a job and you start getting this money, right? This uh, so-called paycheck month on month. And what do you do with it? Some people blow it. Some people, you know, try to make good of it. And others who actually want to try to do good with it are actually looking for avenues uh, to starting to invest and save a little bit more for retirement. And that's where we saw this was, was this opportunity. And I quit my job in Singapore and moved back here into KL uh, and form it to, together with Sam and also Adam. Uh, Adam was a, uh, also a friend that we knew back in school. So he was working in uh, equity crowdfunding at the point in time. And he was also, you know, uh, having, looking into uh, managing his own personal wealth uh, because also he's also managing his family's portfolio and stuff like that. So uh, that was something that we, we had something in common. I said, hey, you know what? Uh, there must be some uh, there must be tools you know for us to develop uh, further uh, to see so we started out as a very simple like a chat base uh, chatbot and we could, uh, it was a simple mvp product that started out last year and we joined uh, the bank Nagara program uh, it was part of the alpha startups program where they took a few of these early stage startups put them through a two-month program uh, in, in hopes of coming up with a new innovation. At that point in time, it was uh, on the topic of open banking. So we came in to pitch this idea of having a AI a financial butler uh, in your, on your, uh, your fingertips. Uh, that's where the Hey Alfred um, uh, brand uh, came yes. about. Yeah. Uh, Batman's Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> For legal reasons, I'm not allowed to, to comment. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, like uh, not everyone can afford a relationship manager, right? Uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, you have to have at least a minimum of $200,000 just to, just to even talk to them. Uh, so we figured, you know, this might not be the case for a lot of uh, uh, youth or millennials of today. And we need that some sort of a direction. Uh, full disclaimer, we're not a financial advisor. Uh, we're a self-help tool. So essentially, uh, it's up to the users to make their own financial decisions. Great. What an amazing story. So what, what's, uh, what do you guys do amongst you know, yourself, Sam, Great. Adam? Um, so uh, I take care of the, uh, the, the product um, and also manage a team of uh, uh, developers as well. Um, and Sam handles the day-to-day -day operations. Obviously, one of the things that we're promoting 
as a startup is also financial literacy. Um, and Adam's uh, the head of partnerships where he handles most of the connections that we talk to in terms of with the banks, uh, with the organizations that we engage. Uh, we do a lot of financial uh, uh, literacy outreach programs as well uh, with local organizations here in Malaysia to promote a better understanding into improving financial health for the millennials here. Yeah. So we are very much split into that. Um, obviously, um, as a startup, we all intertwine in terms of our roles and, uh, and yeah. our day-to-day -day tasks. Uh, and that's something that we're very comfortable with, um, you know, having, having them in the my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so before I pass the, the ball to Stefano, I wanted to ask you about uh, a bit more about your tech. So um, you mentioned it's sort of an assistant uh, and, you know, what, what AI, tell, tell us a bit more about it. How does it work? Right. So the, uh, the underlying technology is that we uh, read your bank statement and from which we run it through our machine learning for us to be able to give you nuggets of, uh, uh, you know, small nuggets where you can actually save. Uh, say for example, an example would be uh, if I'm, you know, if, if, you're, if, you're look, if you're putting most of your wealth in a, a current account and you're just having it as a, as a bank account and you use it as well for your expenditure, uh, that might not be the best when it comes to maximizing your money, right? Uh, we wouldn't, we would offer, we would, put together a few different products that you could probably look into through our chatbot. Uh, that's where the Butler service comes in. The chatbot would then uh, recommend some of the partner products that we are working with uh, to be able for you to explore and actually maximize uh, your money at the end of the day. Uh, so that's the underlining technology on how it works. Uh, obviously, this was built everything uh, on the uh, React mobile app. Uh, we have a mobile app running um, and everything's all managed uh, through the cloud. So we have uh, actually a lot of uh, my team are very remote. Yeah, that makes sense. Very straightforward. <clears throat> Stefano, you do you have any questions for Mo? Yes, I noted. I noticed on the website you are calculating how much uh, in total you manage your user to keep track of, and it's sixty-eight million ringgit. That's a mm -hmm. Interesting amount for one year. How did you manage to onboard so many uh, customers and users in such a short period of time? So when we first, uh, even before we released the uh, the version, we were a lot in uh, these accelerator programs. Like I mentioned, we were we first started out by just having the idea and running it through the uh, Bank Negara Central Bank's accelerator program from which we got a bit of uh, seed funding from some angel investors uh, for us to actually create this, uh, this uh, uh, product uh, for our MVP. Uh, before even we launched it, we had a wait list of close to 10,000 users. Obviously, when we, we launched it, uh, the bulk of it actually uh, signed up for it. And what we actually do is that uh, a, we understand that a single user doesn't have just uh, one bank account. They have multiple bank accounts. And what we're able to do is not only connect to bank accounts, but also unit trust uh, investment platforms as well uh, by reading the data. So users will open the app and connect their bank account, their investment banks, their wallets. And when we think about, whoa, actually millennials don't have a lot of money, you know, or the youth are quite broke, which we are, but in actual fact, there's a quite a sizable number of people that are you know, probably uh, with inher inheritance from the previous generation that are looking to maximize their wealth better. And that's where we come in. We're more of like a AI wealth, uh, and I wouldn't say advisor, but you know, uh, insights, yeah, <laughs> insights tool. I guess you're, you're becoming used to uh, dodge all the corners of what you can say and what you cannot <laughs> say. Your, your vocabulary, vocabulary must be very sophisticated now. <laughs> it's, it's getting there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sophisticated. yeah. Well, the, the, the list of words I can't say seems to get longer. <laughs> so if anything, my vocabulary is limited, yeah. <laughs> and how about the regulations? I guess you don't have to adhere to any regulation. You just... Uh, uh, take data from other platforms and you let them take responsibility for it. Is that correct? 
Yeah, so where we sit uh, in terms of the regulation, I mean, obviously, um, uh, this is something that a lot of our users are also asking. Uh, but how, how we are is that we are not an advisor. We don't uh, deal in any investments. We don't take in any deposits. What we do is that we position ourselves as a self-help tool. So the product is completely free for now. Uh, obviously, as a startup, our main goal for us is to gain that user traction um, and to build the brand recognition. Where we stand is that we are now on the user side where we are trying to promote this thing called open finance here in Malaysia, uh, especially starting in Malaysia, where the data belongs to the end users. Um, and it is, you know, in, in, in regulations like if we see in Europe and in the UK with PSD2 coming from uh, the central banks mandating for banks to open up their APIs for end users to be able to tap on this essentially so that they could uh, you know, extract some insights or data value from whatever that they're spending. This allowing you know, third party tapping onto partner APIs and, and fostering this whole open banking over there. So that's something that we're trying to do here in, um, in Malaysia. Uh, obviously, it's still at an infancy stage. The regulators have been discussing it. Uh, for us, it's a matter of when uh, they do that become. Um, but for now, it's as good as users, uh, they can upload their statement using a PDF. They can add in manual transactions in the app. Uh, they can also uh, sync to their bank accounts by giving us uh, access to a read-only mode that we do it once a day for us to pull these transactions. So we have engaged with some of the regulations, uh, regulators here. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't seem to be a problem as of yet, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, can you tell us a little bit about this um, ecosystem you have built? Um, you know, who your ideal business partner is, maybe some examples of partners you currently already have, and, and then who your ideal, you kind of alluded it, to it earlier, your, you know, ideal customer, I guess, millennials. Yeah. So, I mean, the app is are for the millennials of Malaysia. Um, it's a free tool for them to use. Um, we are looking to charge uh, a freemium version uh, later on in the future when we have increased features. But one of the things that we're actually really working on, and this is something that uh, towards on a long-term goal for Hey Alfred, is to be that bridge between the incumbents and the financial institutions that are looking to tap into this user behavior. Uh, the millennials of today, or even in fact in, in the coming years as well, would have a very different perception or in terms of how we interact with banks. Um, I don't think my uh, five-year-old nephew will ever, uh, will ever step foot in a bank to write on a piece of paper to withdraw cash. But that's something that I used to see my mom doing it, right? And it's only going to evolve, you know, it's, it's not going to be any more cash in the future as well. So, but how we see it here, especially in Malaysia, is that uh, we're helping the incumbent banks and the financial institutions to tap onto the, uh, and understand these millennials better in terms of their spending habits. Uh, maybe alternatively coming up with a new social credit scoring system that we're looking into. One of the things that Hey Alfred is doing is that we're also tracking their bills. Not only can you sync your bank account and your e-wallets and your investment platforms, you also sync your subscriptions and your bills. Spotify, your Netflix, your uh, utility bills, your water bills, uh, even your rent, you can also all program it within the Hey Alfred app, from which then the chatbot gives them a monthly update saying that, hey, you're spending this much um, and you're only left with this month, uh, but you have this many days before your next due date for your rent. You know, right before you get kicked out, you might want to cut back on uh, the bar trips. So that's where the AI chatbot comes in. It's a very friendly tool. Uh, it talks to a millennial in a, very, in a language that they understand. It makes finance or at least personal finance a little bit more palatable in that sense. Uh, and that's where we sit in terms of uh, our ecosystem that we're building. Uh, we're helping the banks uh, connect together with our users, the millennials, where we become the trust uh, or from the user's end to be able to you know, come out and give them these avenues for them to explore so that they can make their final decision themselves rather than shoving down uh, ads down their throat. You know? yeah. yeah, makes sense. It's, uh, I love your approach, a very, um, very customer-centric um, approach. Um, I guess follow up to that is, so can you tell us a bit more about your business model? So you don't currently, you don't charge the users, maybe in future, yes. Um, yeah. And the partners? Yeah, so right now we're working together with uh, some product partners out there. Um, and uh, we're working on a referral basis as well. 
So uh, they are, we have a main goal of user acquisition uh, and we're helping them acquire users uh, ourselves. Um, so the partners that we work with are, are other fintech companies at this point in time where their main goal is uh, user acquisition. So we would do cross promotions between our platforms. We would drive the whole content for them in terms of the financial literacy outreach programs that we're already conducting. Um, so in terms of uh, remuneration, what we're getting right now, we've uh, done uh, yeah, just under 50,000 worth of referral fees as well. Yeah. Obviously, we also have uh, business solutions that we, we do on the side to keep the lights on. Uh, so that's something that as a startup, I think that it's, it's quite common for us to be also uh, uh, dive into uh, white labeling some of the solutions that we've built here at Hey Alfred. Actually, can you talk a bit more about that? Because I know you guys also do um, uh, social media uh, like the services, I guess, and your actually your somebody I worked with uh, mentioned that your uh, social media efforts are very. Uh, admirable and very, you know, it's it's just very easy to understand and very catchy uh, for a space that's like really complicated, known to be complicated. Yeah, I mean, if anything, it's is 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 a team's effort. What we do um, is really trying to ch turn the insights into fun stuff. Uh, you know, so the things that we do, you know, like uh, breaking down financial jargons for users in the language that they understand. Uh, we'll we'll explain compound interest in like baby steps one, two, three. Um, and things that we really try to make it sound as if it's actually fun. I think the, one of the things that I, I, I personally had a problem with was uh, I always feared when it comes to money, uh, especially growing up. You know, it's, it's, it's more of a, do I, I need enough? You know, always in the bank account. But then over the years, I mean, also in my early 20s, when I started out getting this paycheck and start working and, you know, making some money, my relationship started to change with it. And that's something that we're trying to drive here at Hey Alfred as well. Um, a lot of the times people think about money or at least the millennials, and, and this is the insight that we get, was that I need a lot of it, uh, but they don't understand that it's actually not so much on the end goal of how much it is, how many zeros you have in the bank account, but it's more of the process and the relationship and how you treat it. It might sound very, uh, uh, you know, very up in the clouds, uh, but it essentially is really a relationship with your, with with the numbers of zeros. It's nothing else. It's a medium of exchange, you know, and the end goal is where you want to be, right? Uh, whether if if you want a new PlayStation Five or whatever, and this is what we get a lot of questions like, how do I want to? Do I use my emergency fund for a PlayStation Five? Uh, that kind of stuff. That's something that we can't advise on. But what we tell you is that if that PlayStation 5 makes you happy in the, in the short time and, you know, it, you're going to be a pro gamer for some reason and, you know, for suddenly the, that, that initial 5,000 ringgit investment is actually nothing. Uh, but it all depends on your happiness at the end of the day. And that's what we're trying to build here. Changing the perception and changing uh, the way we see money. And that's why I think it comes across as well through our social media. Make it very fun. We turn hit, we turn uh, jargons in on his heads and, yeah. Makes sense. So, so what, switch. Yeah. yeah, what can um, businesses come to you for besides, you know, being a partner? Um, so we, I mean, we, we do uh, financial literacy programs as well, like I said, uh, oh, in terms okay. of for the brand awareness uh, for yeah. our partners. Uh, we also do technical solutions that we provide. Uh, so one of the things is that we're able, uh, we, we develop our own proprietary tool to be able to read data in a secure manner. Uh, without infringing on, on security for all these other partners' uh, services. So, so these data crawl services are something that we are offering to some of our corporate partners on a close basis as well. Yeah. Interesting. Wow, this is the true sense of the word ecosystem. I mean, you are connecting the dots for everybody uh, within the space. Um, amazing. Uh, Stefano, um, any other questions for most? Yeah, I remember some of these uh, budgeting tools available on my first iPhone, which I think was an iPhone 2, they were excruciatingly slow uh, because there was a lot of cash, there was no interaction with bank accounts, and so anything that you buy, you pay cash, you take a picture of the, uh, of the receipt. The OCR was terrible, so you eventually have to correct whatever has been picked up wrongly from the OCR. Um, and, and perhaps even some of the users, they might have used it for months and they realized it was just a chore uh, that, that didn't translate into 
um, saving more or being more efficient because the moment you start skipping entries, then you already falsify your data, which is also quite interesting in terms of uh, analyzing why data are um, data is probably uh, in, in someone's uh, view is not really the the, the new gold. Uh, or the new oil uh, as they translated it because it really depends on the quality of data but I guess you you already over took that uh, hurdle and, and nowadays in 2020 uh, the quality of the data that you can have especially in a country like Malaysia where you have all your wallets digitally all your bank accounts digitally still have uh, quite a bit of uh, cash requirements uh, when you go around and buying things uh, but uh, I guess your data now are extremely clean uh, easy to collect, easy to read, easy to understand, plus the proactive uh, uh, interaction with the AI and the bot makes it uh, a totally different experience than, than 10 years ago. Uh, do you relate to this type of experience of uh, being uh, uh, more efficient uh, and more effective in communicating? Yeah, you know, that's, that's exactly the same uh, experience that I had as well. Uh, most of the budgeting apps suck. Uh, and I always fall back to my Excel sheet. Uh, it's a cumbersome process. Uh, but, you know, that's when we figured the first, the first problem is, is, is the fact that I don't want to do the manual entries. I want, I want my data that of me already spending uh, and, you know, deducting from my bank account automatically be synced. Uh, so that's where that's where we develop our own proprietary technology for it. It has changed a lot, um, and and like I mentioned earlier, you know, in in Europe and in the UK, with the PSD two, everything's all interconnected. The APIs are all available. But here in Malaysia, we are still facing some sort of, uh, I would say, a pushback or resilience from the bank uh, to have what we call an open finance system, uh, where data can be shared. Uh, obviously, securely between between partnered and trusted companies, um, but for us, it's only a matter of time. Still, uh, we see a very uh, bright future for the regulators here, uh, especially during this time. You know uh, that we're in today's day and age with the whole thing, the whole world crisis that's happening at this point in time. It has accelerated a lot of other technological advances. Um, that was probably planned out for 10, 15 years ahead, but it had to be, you know, uh, pushed back or not pushed back, but pulled forward and start for and, you know, to look into. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, Malaysia is a very prime uh, uh, country as well to test a lot of things. Uh, there's a lot of good support from the regulators here. They're very engaging. Uh, they have got a very good ecosystem in terms of the investment structure that they've built here as well with a lot of these uh, organizations that they've set up. So it's, it's, it seems promising, uh, especially for Hey Alfred. But like what you said, Stefano, the data, the data is not the new oil anymore. Uh, how we feel that is what really you do with the data, right? Uh, so that's where the insights come in for us. Uh, and the chatbot is essentially the, uh, your relationship manager. In a way, you are kind of a data company that filters clients for third-party uh, financial advisors. In in an elevator pitch, it will even go as a as such. And I see your partners. If you want to mention any of them, feel free to do so. Uh, they basically are companies that are themselves uh, targeting the same target audience that you are targeting, and they are selling uh, investments in a very straightforward way, uh, reducing the friction and uh, um, f making the onboarding as fast as possible. That, that's, that's the purpose of probably what you are doing on a daily basis, is just expanding on the potential uh, upsell or um, partners that can help you also increasing uh, your, your revenues generally. And that's probably your, rev your core revenue model, is that correct? Yeah, yes, uh, that's pretty much uh, what we do. Uh, we, get, we, we get paid. Uh, some of them are willing to spend <laughs> on customer acquisition, especially the banks. Uh, you know, on credit cards, they go up to sometime close to a uh, thousand ringgit, depending on the credit limits. Uh, and half the time, we're looking to uh, reduce their customer acquisition cost by 50% sometimes. Because what we already have is uh, a holistic uh, profile of our users uh, from their liabilities to their assets and that's essentially what we're doing 
Um, also, the fact that um, we're addressing this huge problem within the industry where the banks are, especially here in Malaysia, uh, coming up with this new term for millennials. They're called the thin files. Uh, this is something that's being used in the industry where a lot of millennials have zero file or a very thin file with the bank. They're not creditable, right? Uh, even though you, you pay your Netflix bill on time or you've never faltered on your Spotify subscription, uh, you're not eligible for a, for a credit product for the banks. Uh, because we don't know how to score you. Um, so most of the time, the traditional scoring methods have been uh, yeah, somewhat lost, and that's where we see ourselves as a bridge. Yeah, that's a very interesting topic to me, very sensitive. I also operated uh, for a period in the financial um, literacy and in the financial inclusion space in a different geography, but uh, similar challenges, the fact that there is an outdated uh, a credit scoring system or rather than our data is not inclusive is exclusive and um, takes in account uh, um, things that are easy to to go around for instance you have 10 credit cards with a one dollar spending and you pay none of uh, 10 of them on time and the other one you have a, a ten thousand dollars debt and then they kind of balance back so there, there are loopholes even in, uh, in what is probably not exactly in these terms, but there are loopholes in the system that can be uh, discovered. Uh, but I also imagine you have a kind of a ethic uh, line, that, ethical line that you cannot cross on what type of partners you board, because the purpose, as you say, is to be not to be financial advisor, but there is a thin line where you have to push product to your customers in order to make, to pay your bills, basically. And, and therefore, as much as a bank, if you go in the in one department, they will tell you spend. If you go to the credit card department, they tell you spend. If you go in another department, they tell you save, don't spend. <laughs> they have conflict, conflicting uh, messages as well. You probably have conflicting, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word interest, but for lack of better words, uh, conflicting interest in who you who do you onboard. Is someone, is, is a partner that is pushing a product that really help your millennial uh, target audience client or is a product that probably is not really in line with what uh, you want to advertise? Do you find yourself having this type of dilemma sometimes? Yeah, so that's obviously that's, uh, it goes back to our point on where we sit. Um, so we are at first um, a mobile app for the users. So that's where, that's the first fundamental problem every time when we start, uh, or I wouldn't say the word recommendation, but it's more in where we start pushing some certain products to them. Uh, we look at the user, you know, uh, users are able to, I'll give an example where, you know, users are able to link insurance, uh, get insurance policies onto the Hey Alfred app. And, uh, you know, we, and then we notice that there's an insurance gap of, let's say, for example, uh, you know, uh, med medical or life insurance is, you know, he doesn't, hasn't subscribed to life insurance yet. This is where, we work together with partners who already have built relationships with existing product players. So as you can see, we're working together with uh, people like iMoney. Uh, these are aggregators themselves who already have an array of products for us to be able to tap on. They already have the data for these products and we have the data for the users. We're able to match those data so that we can actually pull it using the algorithm that we've actually built. Now, obviously this is going to take some time in terms of building it, and uh, right now, in terms of where we are, we're looking to build the user data set first. Uh, understanding the user as much as possible before we start recommending them something. Because like what you said, something that we recommend could be quite detrimental to their health, you know. Uh, and this is something that where we cite with the users and before we do with the partners. Yeah, I just wanted to comment that a little bit. Um, I'm just thinking about you know, the world we're moving towards where previously marketing advertising has been considered like a dirty, kind of a dirty word. Um, but that's because, you know, like um, products has been, have been advertised to the mass without actually, you know, being specific to a certain user or solving a user's uh, problems. And uh, so really love how you guys are operating where you're putting your, you know, your customer in the center of everything you do and you're making sure that, products that are putting that you are putting in front of them are products they actually you know will improve their lives um okay so so separately wanted to ask you about uh your traction so you guys started last year um and as of so recently now uh 
what, what are you looking in terms of number of users or partners, whatever metric you use to uh, measure your growth? Yeah, so right now we're looking at a monthly active user of 2,500. Uh, this has been uh, on the rise. Uh, this was the last figure that we had in September. Um, mm -hmm. We've been doing uh, close to about 30% month on month. Uh, obviously, we've, uh, we've only um, uh, gotten a, a small angel investment at the start. It was a family, friends and fools round that we raised uh, to get us going and get the uh, product out. Um, but we're looking to uh, uh, raise another 250,000 US dollars for us to be able to um, gain. Uh, this way, we start going to start user acquisition. We're looking to get 50,000 at the end of uh, next year, in fact, uh, or even possibly grow into that. Um, reason also being is because uh, the connectivity with the banks, so that's something that we're working with. So we're also in heavily engaging with some of the local banks here for us to be able to work on these APIs. Uh, at this point in time to build that uh, API portal for these uh, banks for them to start uh, allowing third-party providers like us to tap onto securely as well. So in terms of the matrix that we're looking uh, in terms of targeting right now is uh, the bank partners that we're engaging with and also the uh, number of users that we're uh, uh, or, or the community members for Hey Alfred to be able to use Hey Alfred as a budgeting tool and better themselves in yeah, their financial health. So those are the two things that we're looking at at this point in time. And we're fundraising for us to be able to grow our user base. That makes sense. Mm. Um, who would you consider as your competitor? Um, I think there's a lot of uh, uh, budgeting tools out there as well. Um, but there hasn't been one that is quite Mal Malaysian centric yet. We're starting out very localized. Uh, reason being, uh, we pride ourselves as a, uh, also as an AI chat. Um, and this is for us to be able to understand the local language, which is not Malay or English. Actually, in Malaysia, is Manglish. Manglish, uh, yeah. <laughs> and they have they actually they have very weird, and they have another segment called the WeChat language, uh, where they use codes uh, to interact with. Uh, and these are the millennials of Malaysia. Is this like emojis? You're saying it's not so much of emojis. It's like X D E. Uh, C M N E, you know, those kind of things. Those are actually, those are actually real words. Yeah. What is X D E? Tade. Tade. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Tade. Yeah. Okay. Me, got yeah. X D E. So you know, they, this is a whole new language, but it's actually a quite substantial language when you talk to millennials, and that's something that we found uh, through our the machine learning that runs through. Oh. So we also feed, we also yes. feed. Yeah. So this is a whole complicated thing now. I mean, if, mm. you, if you're going to chat with, you Correct. know, um, a bot, like, yeah, okay. Exactly. <laughs> so if you're going to be chatting, you're going to be understanding that language. So what we do, uh, we, we feed uh, Twitter APIs to our, our, our program for us to be able to pull these new languages yeah. to understand. And then we have one guy in the back to, to try to Yes, rectify. no, correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to wow. rectify. Yeah, most of the time it's me. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's how it's done uh, initially. Uh, obviously, the, the big goal for us is to develop it and, yeah, and improve on it. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Um, okay, so... and. I, I can imagine you have uh, probably a small-ish team uh, having just started out last uh, year and also, you know, fintech, uh, trendy lean. Can you tell us about your kind of team size and structure? Yeah, so uh, we're a team of five. There's uh, three co-founders um, and we also have uh, a uh, community engagement. So that's where we do a lot of our outreach program. So Cal, Cal handles a lot on the community side as well. And then uh, I also have a uh, developer here in Malaysia, uh, Faris. So he's the newest addition to the team as well. Um, so we're also taking young talents to come on board to see how um, they can, or some of the new features that they want to see. So Faris is the youngest one, I think he's like 21, 22. Uh, but it is, after all, the, the right target audience for us to be targeting. So we get uh, Faris also handles some of the tech stuff that we do here. Yeah. And then I also have another, um, I was uh, CTO, he's actually based in uh, Japan. Uh, so uh, Min, Min is actually based in Japan. So he's the one that's managing the day-to-day -day sprints and stuff like that in terms of the tech development. Wow, team of five, 2,500 uh, monthly active users. And I want to stress um, on that with the audience, you know, not just users who, who have downloaded before, but people who are actively using 
you know the uh, the app um, you know on a daily monthly basis yeah um, so what we get users to do actually is uh, the machine learning helps understand the string language of your bank statement sometimes you know you come out it's like what is this uh, what did I spent on right you ask yourself mm -hmm. so we understand that and we actually categorize them onto the hey Alfred app so in the hey Alfred app you'll see it as a category whether it's a grocery shopping that's where the machine learning comes in uh, but what we get users to do on a weekly basis is to help us identify the merchants. So we're getting them to log in and changing the logo from just a, you know, a blank emoji into identifying what that merchant is that they actually just spent on. Right? Yeah. So that's something that they do weekly. And then they can also win cash prizes if they do. And we have a 500 ringgit the weekly pot that we give out yeah, oh, to brilliant. users with the highest, uh, highest transaction rate. Yeah. So all that is run through our social media game. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course, you're using uh, gamification to keep people engaged and, and looking at their finances because it's, it's not enough. One thing I've learned in life in, in terms of like selling or, you know, to have a good product is not enough. You know, like if you have a good product that solves a real problem, that's not enough to get people to use it. You, you got to, you know, gamify things or just, you know, be able to win some cash prizes or, or whatnot. Um, yeah. All right. So now COVID uh you know we're still in the midst of COVID. um how did that affect your business um actually uh COVID has been quite of a blessing for us i mean i think a lot of people are uh, a lot more people are going broke or yeah, <laughs> trying to look for to trying mm -hmm. to look to better their situation i'd say uh, most of the inquiries that we get is that uh we were looking uh, a lot of people were asking us in terms of debt advice uh, that's something that uh, we are partnering up with a local organization here in Malaysia, AKPK, that handles, uh, it's a government agency set up by uh, the Minister of Finance to handle debt counseling. So from over the whole COVID period, we got a lot of queries and a lot of questions coming in, asking us, uh, oh, I have this loan, what about the moratorium? You know, how is it going to affect my life? Is it going to extend these? And we found ourselves in a position where we're not, we're not able to reply to them in the most effective way. So that's why we've struck a partnership with AKPK uh, to, be, to handle these questions and queries that comes in. Uh, so we're actually releasing a new version of the app uh, later on this week where we're going to be including uh, AKPK support staff, uh, 20, uh, not 24 hours, but uh, easily accessible through the Hey Alfred app. Users can automatically chat with a live age uh, counsellor there uh, to book an appointment or even to understand better if they are eligible for AKPK services. So that's something that we built for AKPK as well. Um, and uh, there are 750,000 uh, visitors yearly can actually, instead of going down to the branch because of uh, you know, the whole situation right now, can actually start engaging with these counsellors through the Hey Alfred app. Yeah. Wow, what a strong USP. I, I heard you guys are releasing, oh, have been working hard to release a new version, but this, yeah, so it's just such a strong feature to, for this, this latest update. Really yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I know this program is probably going to run later on, so by then it should be up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, Stefano, I'm going to bounce the ball back to you. Oh, sounds really interesting. I think I'll do some uh, exploring as well, or the application. I'll definitely give it a try. I don't have any other question. Actually, we're taking quite a bit of your time. But if you want to ask a few more questions, Sorry, wait, yeah? I have one yeah. last question. Yes, one last question before we, we uh, pass it to Mo for last words. <laughs> so, um, Mo, I want to ask, what is your plan for the future? Yeah, so uh, our, our plan uh, has always, from the start has always been um, making an impact in the everyday life of a millennial, right? Uh, in terms of their finances at least. Uh, so that's where the mobile application tool comes in. For the users, we're offering a free tool for them to start tracking. I think that's the first step is to start taking control of their finances. Knowing what's coming in, knowing what's going out is the, probably the most fundamental thing. Uh, and that's something that we want to try to impart as well. There are a lot of steps. I mean, and a lot of these financial gurus can tell you how to make money and all do do drop shipping. Um, but what we really want to do is that it's not about so much of the goal. And we want to try to better understand and make you build a better relationship when it comes to your own money. Everyone has a different, uh, you know, digit in their bank account. Um, but then again, it's the relationship of it that we need to uh, build and foster. You know, but of of course, in any relationship, there's always love and hate. Uh, but more often than not, we want to try to make you love your money, even though there's none. 
you know. <laughs> I really like this part of your approach that is not just the tech for the sake of tech, but you also have a, a bigger vision. And that one is really something uh, that makes this project very interesting. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me as well. Yeah. Is there any last message that you want to deliver to investors or partners or anyone that could be in our audience? Well, I, I mean, you know, uh, I, yeah, if anything, uh, thank you, Stefano and Diane, for having me on uh, Vox. Um, and do check us out at heyalfred.co. Uh, and if you'd, like to, uh, yeah, if you'd like to speak on how you can make an impact on uh, the everyday millennial Malaysian, uh, let me know. Yeah. What's the best way to get in contact with you? Yeah, you can drop me an email at uh, mo at heyalfred.co. Uh, that's probably the best. I'm on, I'm on that 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mo, for your time. Um, I love this whole concept of, you know, like changing um, your relationship with, with money as I, I do feel it's been changing, you know, throughout, you know, my 30 plus years of life. Um, thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.